I'm going to give my interpretation of Galatians chapter 3, verse 1. Yes, just one verse. Because as then, as is today, many are being bewitched. And I was talking on the phone to Brother Frank today, and I told him that I believe that we today are living in the greatest age of greed and deception that the world has ever seen. Technology, the internet, has contributed to this statement. The worldwide, yes it is, web, uh-huh, and it's bewitching folks. Now, we all learned in grammar school what is a spider and what is the function of the web that the spider spins. It's offering deceptions of what the masses of minds programmed by Hollywood and the music industry want to believe that the Bible and the Gospels mean to them. Everyone, especially here on YouTube, is led by the Spirit, aren't they? And has dreams from God. God speaks through the printed page of the Bible to us today. And it's up to you to pray to God for understanding and to discern who is just and proper in the secular fellowship you're listening to. But personal study is first and foremost. Let's do Galatians chapter 3, verse 1. O foolish Galatians, who hath bewitched you that you should not obey the truth, before whose eyes Jesus Christ has been evidently set forth, crucified among you? Paul, the apostle of Jesus Christ, is questioning their experience at this point. He's saying, who? Paul asks vehemently with an evil-eyed glare, who hath bewitched you? Who has fascinated y'all away from your conversion experience? Bewitched in this verse metaphorically means blinded by malicious magic. The Galatians had their eyes focused on Christ crucified. Have, have the church congregants of Galatia been authentic in their conversion? Paul's wondering. Or are they suckers and been hoodwinked? Seeking justification from works and sanctification through law keeping. Well, hoodwinked, I say, because Paul sees behavior as if they have been bewitched, captivated by a spell of fascination. In Freemasonry, hoodwinked is blindfolding, covering the eyes. A Masonic candidate in the ritual of initiation, has his eyes covered with a handkerchief or a bandana. I've heard from a couple masons, some of them use goggles. Maybe a hood. But in any case, the candidate is hoodwinked. And the reason is to acquire new knowledge bringing the candidate from ignorance of darkness to the knowledge of light. So what would you understand a ritual of this sort by a potentate, a mere man, bringing one from darkness, darkness to light to be? Well, the early Christians rejected the spirit, spiritual esoteric mysteries and sorcery. They insisted on the openly public character of God's revelation in Jesus Christ, of the cross, the raw gospel, and Christian fellowship in available places wherever they could gather. The Galatians showed evidence of being deceived. Therefore, deceived is a more modern definition of, of the word hoodwinked. But Paul was seeing this character in them. So Paul says, for good reason, who hath bewitched you? Well, Christ's crucifixion, yes, had already been accomplished. The, the law was sprouting up again as mankind's savior. They're forgetting the reality that Christ's crucifixion through past, though it was past, though it was, but the results of it continue on even today. And today we are still attempting to make our own way. By me, 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 works of self. 
O foolish Galatians, who hath bewitched you that ye should not obey the truth, before whose eyes Jesus Christ hath been evidently set forth, crucified among you? Set forth is explaining a topic in writing or speech or painting in a clear, organized manner. Now, I'm sure Paul didn't sketch it on a rock, a rock face, pictorials of the sanctity of Christ. He used the Holy Spirit-inspired word pictures. The best that he could, he preached the gospel of Jesus Christ. Paul taught them the law's ability to save them is by their own ability. And that it cannot be achieved by the fallen, sinful nature of the human condition. Let's go back to Galatians 2.19. For I through the law am dead to the law, that I might live unto God. There were Old Testament writings then. They were shared and well known in the ancient days. Paul's preaching to them was in line with the blessings to Abraham. Let's let's go jump ahead here. Let's just jump ahead to Galatians 3.14. That the blessing of Abraham might come on the Gentiles through Jesus Christ, that we might receive the promise of the Spirit through faith. Galatians 3.11. But that no man is justified by the law in the sight of God. It is evident, for the just shall live by faith. In 3.12. And the law is not of faith, but the man that doeth them shall live in them. Crucified among you, that was the message of the gospel preached to them in the previous chapters. What the Galatians are experiencing here is quite reflective of today. There are books, devotionals, that are out of context and relevance to certain scriptures that, that, that are just an interpretation of a person just as I'm doing here. I pray that this guiding and leading within me is the Holy Spirit and I'm not leading sheep to the slaughter. It's a good way to inherit hell, isn't it? Hope I'm not. But everyone says they have the Spirit and they're hearing from God. There are many, well, YouTube channels that say you have to relearn everything you thought was biblically true, that Paul was a false prophet, that Jesus is Yahusha, God is Yahuwah, and the Holy Spirit is Ruach HaKadosh. Maybe in Hebrew, but most of us speak and read English and have the J in our vocabulary. So I think Jesus knows to whom we are, we are speaking to. So... Now regarding the law here, so Romans 2.14, for when the Gentiles which have not the law do by nature the things contained in the law, these having not the law are a law to themselves. So conscience is a witness, and first or last will bear witness as by nature. Conscience is a witness, and first or last will bear witness. Okay, so as they kept or broke these laws and natural laws and dictates, their consciences either acquitted or condemned them. Nothing speaks more terror to the sinner than that Christ will be the judge. Secret sins will be punished and they'll be brought to light. Whether you're a Christian or an atheist, Jew, Gentile, everyone has an awareness of what is right and wrong. It's on our hearts. Why do you think homosexuals come out of the closet all of a sudden? Well, because it's accepted today. And they're not embarrassed to do it behind closed doors like they once did. Why'd they hide? Because they have an awareness of the natural moral law. Why do thieves go into store and steal? They take a peek over their shoulder first before they put an item in their pocket because they know it's wrong 
And if they get caught, there's consequences. There's many examples you can give on people, human nature, knowing the moral law. The Ten Commandments, every one of them. You know not to cheat on your wife. Why is, why is a man hide his phone from his wife? So she doesn't see it. The text messages back and forth to his woman he's skirting around on with because he knows there's consequences. If there weren't consequences, you'd do it right out and open, wouldn't you? So that's all for that one verse. But if you're blessed with the Holy Spirit, and you ask for advice for anything from a person, you'll almost always side with Satan. Think about the advice from a carnal person with self in mind. You need to follow the Spirit within you. It seems like you're not going to get the answer that you want to achieve in this world we're in. But we're supposed to focus on things of above. And follow the Holy Spirit. Listen to that voice. Don't get wrapped up in asking for other people's. Advice on how to take care of a certain, certain situation. Or how to do something to achieve the outcome you want. You'll contaminate your mind and you won't be able to catch the blessings that are being presented to you. Because you're wrapped up in me, me, me. Focus on things above. Eradicate materialism and keeping up with the Joneses. We don't need that. We don't need that trash in our life. Live simple lives for Christ and spread the word. Okay? Till next time.